Okay, so in this part 2 of the open-ended, we're going to continue from where we left in the previous video. I'm at part B on Benny. Benny removed an outer ring of the stem. As a result, the tubes that carries food were actually removed. And the tubes for water remained. So only the food was affected. So now let's look at the placement of the leaves first. You have some leaves on top of the cut area. You also have some leaves below the cut area. So which one will represent the appearance of the stem? So number one, we know that the stored food all right, would be trapped somewhere, right? Because of the water or the food carrying tube that has been cut off. So because X is on top, Y is below, you will see that those food that were trying to travel downwards could not travel. So you end up with a very swollen stored amount. All the stored food are here. All the stored food are here. All right, it makes sense because your food is supposed to travel downwards. All right, but couldn't, so it's all stored there. Okay, so already one option is out. This cannot be. Now, be also mindful that because there's also leaves, the food making leaves at the bottom of the cut area, there's also food that will be traveling up and down to the roots and up to the, the stem on top. So, in fact, the part will also start to swell here because it's trying to travel up but it could not so it's also stopped there and it swells up so the answer will be this one all right because there's also leaf at the bottom of the cut area so it's trying to travel upwards but cannot so it's stopped there all right now for explaining your answers two things that you will need to look out for in your answer i will need you to mention the direction of travel of the food that's number one okay and number two keywords i will need to see the word stored i don't want you to use the word stuck no such thing for science so we're gonna put it in proper sentences explaining your answers so we can start by saying that food made by the leaves travels downwards but are stopped at x because food carrying tube was cut off okay now this is only one point second point you mentioned about traveling downwards we also got to mention about traveling upwards so food made by the leaves below travel upwards but are stopped at Y because the tube was cut off okay so you have to mention two because of two marks the one that's traveling downwards the direction downwards and also upward direction two directions to mention so if you only mention one direction you will only be getting half of the marks allocated so you need to mention two directions okay that's why the swollen part is at both okay question 37 diagram shows the cells taken from different parts of the cactus leaf cactus plant sorry so you have one that is taken from the stems the other one taken from the leaves what is the function of q then 
All right, Q is actually a, a cell wall, right? It's all pointing towards the outer part of the cell. So what is the function of cell wall? It gives the cell or gives the plant its shape. All right, that's the purpose of the cell wall. Now, which part is the one that makes the food? Quite interesting because by your now knowledge, you know that leaves are the one that makes food. All right, now the leaves are able to make food because of the presence of chloroplast. But if you look at cactus, do you realize where the chloroplast are found at? They are found at the stem. So quite interestingly, yeah, instead of the leaves that makes the food, it is the stem that makes the food. So this is my choice. Why? Let's talk about the evidence. Chloroplast evidence are from the picture are found only in the stem cells. So the cells can trap. This is the result, ah, the so part. So we need to talk about the usual trap sunlight for the plant to make food. So that is explaining the purpose of chloroplast so that it can help to trap sunlight for the da 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 da. Okay, question 38. This is Jia Jia set up an experiment. Uh, three different materials measured the distance where it started to uh, started to bend uh. that is a uh, 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 idea of being bent of course the more you bend let's say you bend until like that that means the distance gets even longer so what do you think the property was trying to test for easy flexibility because talking about how much you can bend but if you remember previous practice we talked about something about the rubber band before it starts to break uh, that is not flexibility that is about strength Okay, how strong or how weak. Based on the results, which one will be most suitable for making a bookshelf? Common sense will tell you that you have to only use one that doesn't bend a lot. Because I don't think you will ever see a bookshelf that bends when you put heavy things on it. So what is the reason? The choice is there already. Evidence will be from the table. Bends the least. I hope you know why I use the word the least because it is a comparison of three things. Okay, so this is the this is the evidence, and we're going to go to the results. What happens when you have things bending the least? So the cupboard can hold on. To the books without maybe dropping all right because if you're going to bend all the way your book is going to bend until it reaches the floor without dropping so something like that will be your result so the one in green will be the result so all right so do your checkpoint to make sure that your C your choice is correct your evidence from the picture is or from the result is shown and what is the result of the evidence? Okay, Jia Jia repeated the experiment. This time round, he wants to keep the distance the same. He placed a wooden block of different mass of the strips. Name the strip with the heaviest block. So to make sure that your heaviest block, uh, he wants to make sure that every distance is the same. Everything will bend the same. So that those material that is not bendable, all right, not easily bent, what does the person need to do? He has to place more weight, right? Or more mass. Correct or not? Because it's so, it's so inflexible, you will need to exert more force on it so that it will be able to bend equal distance like the rest. So the one with the heaviest block would actually be the one on T because you want to place the most heavy one on the most inflexible one until it starts to bend like the rest. And of course, the one that bends very easily, you don't want to put a lot anymore. You want to put only a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to bend even further. 
So by doing it this way, you will have all your three strips bending the same distance. Alright, makes sense, right? Quite, quite interesting question here. Okay, question 39. Ryan wanted to find out which pond has the most amount of soil particles. Alright, so quite an interesting way to find out most amount of soil particles. That means your water is going to get quite cloudy, right? Because you have water with a lot of soil particles in. He placed it in a dark room so that it doesn't capture the surrounding light. He placed the beaker of water on identical and the brightness was measured. So the, the light is going to pass through and there's going to be a data logger somewhere to measure. So the friend said that his experiment was not fair because the only change variable was the water, right? So the change variable is supposed to be just the water. But you look at what Ryan did. Ryan did more than just one change variable. So what should he do to make sure it's a fair test? Number one, you notice also the volume of the water is different. The volume itself has to be the same because all you want to measure is how many particles, how much particles are in the water. So the volume of water ought to be the same. Otherwise, of course, the one with the more volume will capture lesser light. Right, even though there's uh, not many particles inside. So the volume of the water in the setup has to be the same. Eh? Because you're only changing the water itself, not the volume of the water. And also one another obvious one is the distance of the torch. Lah. All right, so to make it obvious, you'll be distance of the torch and the water should be the same. Right, you want to make sure that the distance between the torch and the water is the same. Not one where your torch light is far, far away, the other one is nearer. So Ryan found a light sensor. After making the two changes, how Ryan can find out which pond water has the most amount of soil particle. If you have a lot of soil particle, the water will be very cloudy. You won't capture a lot of light, right? It's going to block out a lot of light. So let's tell Ryan what to do. Okay, so Ryan, Ryan, please start by placing the light sensor below the glass stand. Alright, so he's going to put it, he's going to make all the changes to make it a fair test. He's going to put a light sensor below the glass stand. And we need to tell Ryan how to conclude which one has the most amount of soil particle. So we need to focus on this part, telling him how to conclude which one has the most amount of particle. So basically the one with the least light. Notice I use the word least because there's three setups. The one with the least light that is captured will have the most amount of soil particle. Okay, so this is quite common sense, right? If the water is very cloudy, it means there's a lot of soil particle it's going to block out a lot of lights. Blocking out a lot of lights means it's going to capture the least amount of light. Alright, in fact, I can improve my answer better. Ink. Least amount of light captured will be the one that has the most amount of uh, soil particle. So the comparison words will be least and most. Alright, so that is your words in pairs. Okay, question 40. Jim conducted an experiment to find different ways to cool down two similar beakers, A and B. Each beaker had the same amount of water at 60 degrees, but for B, he's going to surround it with similar beakers. And the time taken for it to cool down seems to be recorded already by him. Let's look at the results for A and for B. And for B, a, you will find that uh, the drop is a lot. Uh, but the drop over here for B is only a little bit. Not a lot. Okay. So why did the temperature both 
decrease first. So we are going to talk about why temperature decrease. We must think of words like loses heat. So these are important words that needs to be in. So we're going to talk about why it loses heat. Water. Let's talk about the location in the beaker. Remember to talk about the location. Loses heat to where? The surrounding air. Right? So that is the reason why that's the reason why you will find that the temperature is dropping because of heat loss. So water where in the beaker loses heat to where the surrounding air. So those that are in red are the location that a lot of students always miss out. So you have to mention that. Now, how come the temperature of B is much higher than in A? Now, for temperature that, that is higher, uh, that means it loses heat slower, right? That's why it's able to retain most of the heat. So, the temperature gets higher. So, why is it that B got higher? Okay, it has got something to do with this overcrowding here, isn't it? So, what concept are they actually testing you on? is on exposed surface area okay it makes sense because if you see exposed surface area for a a lot wow it's everywhere in fact so the area exposed to the air is a lot whereas if you talk about b wow you look at the exposed surface area is so small it's all so cramped so it's all related to exposed surface area why is it that uh B has a higher temperature, so it's because the exposed surface area of B to the surrounding air, right? We're talking about exposing to the surrounding is lower than A. So, again, the result... B loses heat slower than A. Can we check that the comparison words are in? Lower, slower. Okay, and can we also check that your results is mentioned? So, part C. Give a reason why the experiment had to be conducted over a short period of time. So in other words, why can't you drag this whole experiment to the whole day? Alright, by common sense, you know that if you're going to carry out the experiment instead of 10 minutes, you're going to make it 24 hours. It's not going to be a fair experiment, right? Because at the end of the day, anything that's hot will return back to room temperature. So what is the reason why? Because eventually the water will... Water in the cup, in on because the location will lose heat to the surrounding, returning to what kind of temperature? Room temperature. So by then, if you don't measure the temperature fast enough, you only measure it twenty four hours later. Of course, everything will be all room temperature. Then there's nothing you can measure. Okay, question next. Looking at the animals, so what happens? The same idea goes. When it's a very cold environment, they live in large groups, staying very close to another. Exactly like the cup, right? The cup B, isn't it? So why staying close together? Idea is still on exposed surface area to the surrounding. Alright, so the idea is the same. Now you know why penguins love to stick together. So what happens is that the exposed surface area to the surrounding air is reduced when penguins get together or penguins stay close together. And as a result, what happens? Heat loss is 
slower. And when they heat loss is slower, they the so part ah, sorry, so they stay warm longer. Comparison word longer, slower. Okay, so this question is based on the experiment earlier. Exposed surface area lesser. Exposed surface area to where the location is surrounding air. So when it's reduced, heat loss is slower. And heat loss is slower, they keep warm longer. Alright, so next we are at our final last question. And the final last question will be about electromagnetics. Anthony coiled wires around an iron rod. So you know that for because of this, this is going to become a, a temporary magnet or what we call as an electromagnet. He placed a magnet and it moved away. Why does it move away? Okay, it's because the iron rod has become an electromagnet. All right. Now, if you recall what we learned in P4, how to test whether something is a magnet All right, is when it starts to repel. A track alone is not enough to tell that whether something is a magnet because magnetic materials can also attract. Am I right? So, but the moment it repels, then I can be sure both are magnets. So because one has become a kind of magnet, an electromagnet, so what happens? The light poles face each other. Sounds familiar, right, this sentence? So the result is they repel. Again, my result doesn't copy the question. The result moved away. I use the word repel. Okay, so your results, please remember, cannot repeat from the question itself. It must be from your own result. And usually it's a science keyword. So why? Because it becomes a magnet, it repels, like poles face each other. Okay, now part B. Anthony then connected the battery in the opposite direction, placed the same magnet, now they move towards. What can you conclude about the iron rod when he connected in opposite directions? Okay, now in opposite directions, they start to move towards. That means it starts to attract. Right, now it attracts only when it is unlike poles, correct or not? So what can you conclude? about the iron rod now instead of being moving away they are being attracted it must be because the poles of the iron magnet or electromagnet has changed all right initially it was repelled because maybe there were light poles but right now because the, the poles have changed that's why they are attracted. Okay, so that's one possible answer. Now, some of you who are very specific will want to say that because the south became the north and the north became the south. Now, if you are writing this second part of the answer, please remember to write both. Both must be in. You cannot only be writing one side. You cannot be only writing, be writing south becomes north. Because it could be the reverse, because that side could be a north, right? So if you mention the second part of the answer, you must mention both. S becomes north, north becomes south. Then you talk about both sides. Alright, but the safest answer would still be number one, because the poles changed. That's why it, it is able to attract. Okay, so... Uh... They become unlike poles and attracts unlike poles to the bar magnet. Okay.
that's why both attracts. Okay, so we have come to the end of the open-ended section. I hope you have a deeper sense of understanding on how to answer open-ended questions. And so I will see you again.